Hey, this is Russ. I'm going to get the video of the Palisades fire and get you into a few homes so you can see something you're not going to otherwise see. So you can see how it's all shut down here. You can see the fire break there, the non-combustible walkway. It really is interesting how it stopped the fire in its tracks. Just demonstrates the benefit of having some fire breaks in any residential area. The topography plays a major role. It creates its own fire due to um, the addition of heat, the buoyancy of heat, and actually that was called the channel effect. The channel effect compounds radiant energy resulting in um, faster heat transfer and faster ignition. Your vegetation is just too close to the structure. A clear example and clear violation of California Building Code Chapter 7A. So, um, Beautiful, very expensive structures, completely ravaged by wildfires. At this point now, if embers came through, those dry leaves would ignite and you would rekindle the fire. Uh, very easy for that to happen. This tree here, I wanted to point out this, this kind of juniper here, cedar tree here, very dangerous in a wildland fire condition. You will lose your structure. So yeah, this structure, complete destruction, complete loss uh, in the absence of water. Uh, there's no no mechanism nothing you can do other than appropriate preparation but just look at this you can see the tree that would have been on the left side of that structure uh, clearly within five feet of the structure should not have been there that is not something you want to have you want to have a completely combustible free zone within five feet of your structure moreover um, look at that barrier, that wall. Uh, obviously a retaining wall, concrete masonry unit. Excellent idea, but what's not excellent is having the significant um, vegetation buildup on top of that. Um, uh, ideal location for radiant energy to expose your structure, resulting in um, loss of the structure. So um, generally speaking, yeah, you could have made a lot of improvements. I think this whole area to be adequately insured are going to need significant improvements. Now look right over here at this house. Look at that corner. You have all that vegetation next to the structure that should not exist. In fact, I don't even see an appropriately pruned um, wildland fire uh, compliant home here in this whole area. This is just south of the Palisades fire. Um, so significant improvements can be made if you want to make your location fire hardened. You're going to have to do some significant uh, reduction in combustible loading adjacent to the structure and extending out at least 30 feet. Um, that the zero to five feet should be combustible free. Five to 30 should be, um, you know, well controlled. And, and as said before, junipers, cedars, um, you, you shouldn't have trees. These, when they're dry, go up extremely fast. So it would not be good to be close to a structure at all. You can see all the vegetation next to that fence line. The fence provides some excellent protection, but clearly uh, that huge amount of uh, vegetation bordering the property line acts as a, an exposure for radiant thermal energy transfer. So once that goes up, you'd easily be able to jump the line about five feet to the structure and you'd lose it. This was interesting how they're uh, cleaning up. This is cleaning and restoration after the fire. So what they're doing is they're cleaning all the houses of the residue of the smoke. Due to environmental concerns, adequate fire breaks were not placed in these mountains because it damaged um, migratory uh, rodents. The topography, it, um, it acted in such a way to uh, cause a faster heat transfer because the flame is actually closer to the ignitable surface. And that's why these locations burn so vigorously. So let's just take a look at this structure. I, I would not ever, ever have had uh, vegetation that close to a structure it would have taken out any combustible construction. So uh, there's obvious signs of combustible structures. Uh, you have a deck right there that somehow was preserved. Not sure how that happened, but there is some wood construction there that did not ignite. You had underbrush there that would have uh, been on fire, but it would have been very close. The flames itself would have been very close. And because you're up a canyon, it, it generates that um, trench effect that would have pushed it fast. So the, this would have been um, at the end of a trench with combustibles right next to the structure and the flame front obviously high enough to have a direct exposure with the structure. This, this would not have been a smart place to build a house. 
What's interesting about this structure is take a look at the structure immediately next to it, okay? Um, that structure is perfectly intact, whereas this is a complete and total destruction. Um, once again, most likely a function of having combustible vegetation too close to the structure. Uh, that resulted in too much radiant exposure, igniting the structure, and resulting in this devastation. So it emphasizes just how important it is to have um, your structure protected, the vegetation uh, carefully pruned away from the structure. The I-beam would have been uh, supporting a deck of some sort, but the vegetation would have raced right up, um, right up here. Um, and it doesn't take much. You have to have clean vegetation or otherwise a firebrand could land in one location and cause this. Now, you ask yourself, why do these adjacent structures show no sign of damage in terms of actual uh, structural compromise? This is a non-combustible structure. Uh, take a look at those, uh, those, those, those ceiling uh, members. They're steel. So this would likely be a type 2B structure. Um, type 2B defined by the International Building Code is wholly non-combustible. So um, this most likely was a non-combustible structure, which is why it survived. Uh, the heat exposure there would have been likely in the order of 100 kilowatts. Ignition happens about 10 kilowatts per square meter. Uh, so this, this likely had a much higher uh, heat flux than what, um, what standard combustible construction can withstand without igniting. Uh, similarly here, um, I'm guessing you see the terracotta roof. And also take a look at this. This is interesting. Take a look at that roof structure. That has bird stopping underneath those roofing tiles. So clearly they followed the, um, the outline given in Chapter 7A of the California Building Code. Uh, that prevents embers from going in underneath the roof and igniting. Um, and I'm guessing it probably was a non-combustible structure. So with this kind of radiant heat flux from this structure and it's in its close proximity, it would have ignited. And, and basically, if you look at uh, the International Building Code, I think it's um, uh, Table 602, it actually specifies if you're within like, you know, zero to five feet, um, zero to 10 feet, less than 10 feet, you have to have your exterior rated. Uh, so this, this had to be by code, if that's a newer building, um, actual fire rated construction. It would have been mandatory. So that's probably why it survived, whereas this building was very likely an older structure, older um, type 5B or wood framed construction. So um, yeah, I, and this, this is in construction here to the right. Uh, so they would have, um, you know, followed current building codes. This did not. That's what's interesting about this. This house does not meet current building codes, whereas the houses on either side of it do. Likewise, looking at the vegetation in the backyard, uh, this had an abundance of vegetation immediately downhill of the structure, and that would have resulted in more ignitable combustibles that would have provided a higher rating exposure, resulting in this complete loss. Look at the interesting, I'm guessing this pine uh, exterior, um, very combustible. Uh, it ignites uh, under the piloted conditions about 10 times the intensity of the sun, or about 10 kilowatts per square meter. Uh, look at that wood fence. Uh, you could easily ignite that. But what I notice on this side is you have a wood fence going right up to the building itself. So take a look at that wood fence. That is a fuse. That is a fire saying, hey, I want to start. Because that fence, once ignited, it would act as a, a linear fire. It would just move right along that fence. And then you would hit that structure, the wood exterior, it would ignite. If this had received uh, some embers, some uh, firebrands uh, in like a bed of leaves, and there's an abundance of leaves nearby, um, if it would have ignited that fence, you would have lost this structure. It would have been very easy to go. So, so clearly, here's an example where if I eliminated that combustible fence within five feet, uh, made a fence out of non-combustible material, such as steel, um, then you would eliminate that concern. So this, this is a house that probably could not be insured if I was an insurer, I would not insure this structure. Thanks for watching.